and welcome to the channel, G17 Collectibles. Thanks for checking us out. Today, this is the collection tour video, long overdue. Um, the collection is pretty much moved into a new house about, say, 15, 16 months ago, and I finally managed to get everything the way I want it. So I thought, we'll do a collection tour, we'll do a bit of an update on what we've got, because there's a few new pieces in here that I've not done videos on. So, we're going to talk about them and I'll show you what I've got. Now, this is the long video. This is going to be a video where I pick out every piece and I tell you something about it. It's going to be long. However, I've done a shorter video, which is about seven minutes, just giving you a whirlwind tour of the actual collection. So, if you just want to see a very quick whirlwind tour, stop right now, go and check out the other video on the channel. Um, but if you want to know a bit more and you've got some time to sit and listen to me rattle on about all these different collectibles, stick around. Um, I promise I'll try and make it as entertaining and as interesting as I possibly can. <laughs> so, as I said, lived in this house now for about 16 months and I've finally managed to get everything unboxed and everything done and all the lighting done, etc, etc. I'm kind of happy with where I am. I've got lots of pre-orders on the way. God knows where they're going to go. However, I'll always find a space. Now, the way I've set my collection up, this room in the house um, is, serves me a number of purposes. So it's not only the collection room, but it's also um, my home office. So I work from home um, quite a lot, and I've got the home office uh, desk sitting there. It's also the family dining room. Um, so yeah, it's, it serves a number of purposes and my wife is very, very understanding and very kind to let me have all this stuff in the dining room. Her contribution is those flowers right there. <laughs> so the way I've set my collection up is I try and keep everything in kind of like sections. So you can see here, I've got some cabinets and those cabinets from Ikea, brilliant cabinets, can't remember the name of them. But they house all the kind of blasters and weapons. Then above that, we've got some uh, some of the sideshow premium formats, again, all grouped together. We've then got all my Star Wars helmets grouped together. And then over here, we've got all the one six grouped together. The one third scale statues. And then down here, kind of random helmets, masks and busts. And then on the back wall behind me, I've also got my Lord of the Rings swords. So this is like the Lord of the Rings display. A uh, few more things could be added to here. So there's plenty of room for expansion. So let's actually dive in and we'll talk a bit more about everything that's in this room. So I'll start over here uh, at the desk. So we have got a, a sword here from 47 Ronin. Uh, I love that sword. It's a, an amazing piece. Then we've got the Sideshow life-size Grogu. Absolutely love this little guy. The, uh, the detail, uh, just the way he styled the clothing, it's fantastic. Uh, that was purchased direct from Sideshow. On the right-hand side, I've just got myself a little big trouble in Little China Q-Fig, which is pretty awesome. Picked up for £30 recently at a local comic book shop. Uh, love Big Trouble in Little China, so I was really happy to find that little thing from my desk. And then within the desk, yeah, I like Lego minifigures, um, why not? So this is all my, my Lego minifigures in here at the moment. And then, you can't really see it, but underneath the desk we've got some different items, some, some, some guns and some random stuff. Now, this um, took me a long time to set up. This is my Boba Fett. Um, and this is one of the, the last things that I had to do something with. I bought this a few years ago. Uh, it was a used cosplay costume. It is pretty accurate to Return of the Jedi. Um, one of the main reasons why it took me so long to try and get this together was I needed to find a suitable mannequin with movable arms, um, which I found, but then I had to put on some movable hands and do some DIY mods. And I finally managed to get it set up yesterday. Hence why I'm now doing the collection tour video. Really like, it's probably the mannequins are maybe a wee bit too tall, but I really like Boba Fett standing in this corner. He's uh, quite a quite an imposing character, 
but at the end of the day, he's in the corner, so it's not as if he, he's um, he's a large, uh, you know, takes up a lot of space in the room. The way I've laid the room out, that corner was always destined for Boba Fett, and there's some space above, and I can use that space for something else. Now the cabinets, again from IKEA, really fantastic display cabinets. Um, because they serve two functions, they not only give me a lot of lovely space for the weapons, but they also allow me to put my premium formats, my, my favourite statues at eye level. So the cabinets themselves, moving down, um, we've got some master replica stuff. Now I've owned these master replica things for four or five years, easy. Uh, bought them at auction. Um, I really wish I could go back in time and buy all these things when they were released and new from Master Replicas. The second hand market is pretty crazy for this stuff. Um, but I managed to get some really good deals four or five years ago before it went and exploded. So this is the, the Luke Sabre from Return of the Jedi. I think I paid about 400, 450 for that one. Then we've got the um, the Empire Strikes Back look saber. That was a bargain. I think I paid 150 for that because it was just the plaque in the saber with no case. So I had a case made for it. Um, look blaster, one of my favourite things. Uh, again, master replicas. I paid 400 for that um, from a shop down south. Now you wouldn't get much change out of what a thousand, twelve hundred pound for that kind of thing. So I'm really, really happy that I got that for a good ish price. Then moving down, we've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi Sabre, one of the best sabres ever made. It's such a gorgeous sabre and it's the weathered version. Um, again, picked up at the same auction, um, say about 350 for that one. And one of the recent additions, which I'll be doing a separate video on, is the RS Prop Masters um, Scout Blaster. 125 of them made, sold out within an hour or so. Lucky enough to try and secure one. I think that's not it's number seventy-eight of one hundred and twenty-five, and it's the um, Iris Keeler collection. So it's um, directly cast off of uh, Scout Blaster from Return of the Jedi. Over here, Rogue One. I love Rogue One. So we've got the uh, Jin Erso Blaster, which was a, a kit. So that's an all metal Luger, uh, and then the kit that came ordered it from America. Absolutely fantastic blaster. I absolutely love this blaster. Um, so I made that up myself. Uh, painted a few bits and bobs, put the kit together, but it's, it's phenomenal. And then I managed to pick up these CB goggles. They're, they're not as accurate um, to, you know, the actual movie, but they're as close as damn it. So there's the goggles. And then we've got uh, an Imperial um, medallion um, from, I think that's from Mandalorian. And then moving down, Darth Vader, Sabre. I was lucky enough to meet Dave Prowse a few years ago at a convention and I had him sign that plaque. Um, behind that, you've got the Mark Hamill autograph, which again, lucky enough to meet Mark Hamill at the celebration in London a few years back. Um, then we move on to one of my favourite Sabres. This is the one I play with. It's the, uh, the Sabre Trio Sabre. Now this was a... This is a, a, a stunt saber, so it has no um, sounds in it, but it does light up. So you can put a blade in, the blade lights up red, um, and you can swish it about and do some lightsaber moves, which is pretty cool. It's such a gorgeous, well-built saber. Can't quite remember the name of the actual saber. Oh no, it's on the plaque, what a dingus. Skylar, Dark Edition. <laughs> That's why I've got plaques. <laughs> Um, the Skylar Dark Edition, I actually got that a few years ago on their Black Friday sale. They unusually had a, a Black Friday event for ready to ship sabres on Etsy. And how I managed to snag one is uh, incredible, because uh, they sell out so fast. Um, I think it was £160 for that, which is a bargain considering the uh, normal sabres with all the bells and whistles are running to hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And then we've got the Sabre Forge. Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber. That's got um, blue blade. So it's a, a saber that lights up. Um, and 
it's um, got the sounds in it. Um, so that's um, the, the, the Sabre, Ford Sabre. And then last in this cabinet, again at Celebration, I was very lucky to meet Carrie Fisher. Um, and I've got this autograph from her. Now, the next cabinet, um, starting at the top, Blade Runner. I absolutely love Blade Runner. And there's a number of, of things in here. So we've got a 3D printed Officer K Blaster from Blade Runner 2049. We've also got the, um, the, the Deckard Blaster, which is one of the most gorgeous weapons ever made in cinema history, in my opinion. That blaster is from a special edition DVD set or Blu-ray set, should I say. So the blaster is kind of mostly resin. There's a couple of metal elements on it and it's fixed on the stand, so you can't take it off the stand. Um, however, it is, as far as I know, it's it's extremely accurate to the actual blaster that was used. Um, and I absolutely love it. For a display piece, I think I paid £180 for that box set, which came with the blaster and the Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah the Blu-ray. But uh, what a display item, it's fantastic. And then I've just got down there a wee ammo box that I bought from a guy on the Replica Prop Forum. And then in front, again, lucky enough, I go to a lot of conventions, so I was lucky enough to meet Sean Young uh, and had her sign that plaque, who plays Rachel in the original Blade Runner. Moving down, this is the Hollywood Collectibles Group uh, Pulse Rifle. So, it's, I've not done a video on this, but it is a pretty spectacular piece. I was kind of disappointed when I got it, um, the back end of last year. Because I was expecting, I don't know, I was expecting maybe some metal parts or um, some some movable parts. But it's, but it's a stunt version, so it's completely cast. It's solid. Um, and it's cast out of like a kind of resin slash polystone. Um, so, it's it's... It's just a big rock solid lump. Um, there's nothing, no metal on it. Um, maybe a metal clips for the, the strap or whatever, but overall it's just a big lump. But it's a fantastic piece, nonetheless. So after I got over my initial disappointment when I lifted it out of the box, I actually started to appreciate what it was uh, and, and its look. Um, and it is fantastic. It's got a magnetic um, catch on the base so it doesn't fall over. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's actually quite a really, really cool and nice piece. And behind it, again, lucky enough to meet Sigourney Weaver. And I had her sign that autograph. Down below, we've got, did a wee video on this before. Um, I think this only cost me about £40 or something on Amazon. But it's the Indiana Jones Golden Idol, which is pretty cool. Um, Master Replicas, again, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow Flintlock. This was a bit of a bargain because I won this at auction. Uh, and I'm not talking about eBay auctions, I'm just talking about an, an auction house in the UK. I think I got this for like £150. Um, and given how much they're, they're probably worth now, about £400 maybe. Um, I'm really, really pleased with it. Again, it's cast fully in resin, but the look of it is fantastic. It's a really, really nice little piece. Okay, moving on. Last cabinet. Let's open the doors. So, mixed bag here. Ghost in the Shell Thermoptic Pistol. This is a, a, a DIY project. I made this myself. It's not an accurate version of the Major's Pistol. It's just in the style of. Um, I didn't do a build video on this and I kind of wish I did because it's pretty cool. Um, I went ahead and bought... What you can buy in the UK is you can buy Airsoft... Um, weapons that kind of fiery plastic BB guns, uh, BBs, and it's a clear plastic gun, which is pretty cool. Um, so I bought the clear plastic um, BB gun, and then I got some uh, some white plastic, um, and just made all the bits and bobs to to stick on it, and then painted it. And I'm really really happy of how it turned out. Um, and I had to be plaque made for it. There's actually real kind of like shells. I had some brass casings and I made some uh, out of clay. I made some kind of like bullets and painted them as well. So 
yeah, that's that. I'm really, really, really proud of that one actually. The ghost of shell with a multi pistol. And then over here, we've got the Robocop Auto 9. Again, lucky enough to meet Peter Weller, so I'd had them sign that plaque. Uh, and the back there, we've got uh, Yondu's arrow from Guardians of the Galaxy. And then moving down, Tron Legacy ID Disc. I think that's made by Spin Master, so it lights up and has some sounds. I think I got that on eBay for about 40 quid. Oh, and that, that Auto 9 is a cost me a pound. <laughs> um, that was actually a plastic toy that I picked up in a, a, a shop called Poundland in the UK. Uh, it was blue, um, a blue plastic toy many, 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 many years ago, probably 15 years ago or something. Uh, so yeah, that's the old nine, that's how much that cost me, a pound. And then the, uh, the Rambo 2 signature knife, I think that's done by Hollywood Collectibles Group. Um, it's a pretty pretty decent piece that and I've got the, the jade um, pendant jade buddha down there as well and then we've got the Hasbro um, Egon Spengler Proton one from Ghostbusters this has this lights up and has lots of bells and whistles and it is so cool um, I'll maybe do a video on this at some point but there's like a startup sequence so you can flick the wee toggle switches you can press the buttons down here and it, it, it's, it's a proper, proper working uh, replica. And, and it's it, for a hundred pounds, it's a pretty darn good um, display item and toy. Um, it's fantastic. And I've actually ordered the Proton Pack from Hasbro. Um, so that was 350 pounds, but it'll be coming probably next year at some point. And that will be clipping right into the Proton Pack. So I'm really excited about that. Now, above the cabinets is a premium format um, sideshow stuff. So we'll run through these one at a time. So we've got X23. That was a, a bit of a bargain. I got that on eBay for £125. No box, but it had a lot of damage. So the claws were missing. The, there's a couple of chips. Um, there's wee teeny bits missing here and there, which I've fixed. But overall... Um, for £125 for a what, £400 statue normally. I think I did pretty well. And I made these claws myself and just glued them in. They're actually made of uh, plastic toothpicks. <laughs> just spray painted silver. But they do the job. So she's pretty nice. Then we've got Jenny Erso um, from Rogue One premium format. Got a bit of a, a deal on that as well from Sideshow. They were doing free UK shipping. And I think I saved about 10%. So all in, I think I paid about 350 for that one delivered. It's a pretty darn nice premium format. The clothing is pretty nice. The sculpt is good. The accessories are excellent. And I really, really like that premium format. My favourite statue premium format is Red Sonja. I uh, picked this up um, in the UK. I think it was £500. And this thing is phenomenal. I just love it. I love the design, I love the, the sculpt, I love the presence, I love all the detail, the blood. There is a video on this. Um, I've done a separate video many a couple of years back. So if you want to check that out, go to the channel and look for it. It's one of my earlier videos in my old house. And we'll get back get all over here. Again, this is a really, really good statue. It takes up quite a lot of room with that cape and the arms, but you know, I really, really like this one. It's pretty darn awesome. It's kind of bursting through that kind of window there. Now this one, a lot of people talk about what's your grail item in it. For a long time, this was my grail item. It was one that I missed out on. I stupidly never ordered it from a sideshow. Um, and I eventually had to buy it on the second hand market, but they do not come up for sale. I think there was a, the run was like 750, and this is the Sideshow Rebel Terminator. And lo and behold, it sold out the Sideshow, and I regretted instantly for not buying it, but the reason why I didn't is because I can't afford absolutely everything. It was out, out with my, my price range at the time. So fast forward a year, 18 months, two years, one popped up on eBay, 
um, and I bid on it furiously and, and paid 750 for it, but it is spectacular. This statue is absolutely phenomenal. The level of detail, um, no broken parts, but the level of detail that's in this is amazing. And the sculpt, the face, the design is just incredible. So, although Red Sonja is my favourite, this kind of is also one of my favourites. Um, I'm, I'm hard pressed to choose. So that's the Rebel Terminator. And then Harley Quinn. So, okay, the face isn't a direct, you know, likeness of Margot Robbie, but Margot Robbie's a very hard actress to try and capture. I think Sideshow did a fantastic job in this. I really do. I actually think the sculpt is pretty good. It's, it's, I would say it's 95% there. Um, I'm really pleased with it. The actual overall statue, the stockings, the boots, the jacket, um, the gun, the bat, the base. Again, this one is up there with one of my favourite things. This, I got a bargain on local comic book store about a year ago. I was selling it. They had, it was it listed at £350 a year ago, which was a bargain in itself, but the comic book shop was also doing a 20% off all statues. So I think I managed to secure this for like um, £280 a year ago. Phenomenal purchase. I do love a bargain. And then the same comic book shop also had this print uh, and it cost me £15 and it fits behind there rather well. So um, for £15, really, really happy with that print. Okay. Moving up to Star Wars helmets. So on the left, we've just got a, a, a Ruby's helmet. Now this, the reason why I have this is because of two reasons. It's signed by Jeremy Buller, but it was also, it was a gift given to me by a lot of friends um, for my 40th birthday. So it's actually really special. It means quite a lot to me. Um, they all chipped in and, and bought me that and I'm really happy and proud of it. Um, and given the fact it's signed by, by the one and only Jeremy Bullock as well, I'm really chuffed with it. Then we move on to the EFX Darth Vader helmet. This thing is absolutely huge! Um, I got this off Amazon, believe it or not, for £350 about four years ago. It's a great helmet. Absolutely phenomenal. And then this one over here is a Scout Trooper. I bought this off eBay. It's just a fiberglass copy. No, no maker. But it's a pretty good helmet as well. It's really heavy, actually being solid fiberglass. And then we've got the EFX Stormtrooper helmet. That's pretty nice too. Got that from a UK website, Collectibles Direct, for about £200. Then we've got the Mando helmet. Um, a wee plaque made up there. This is from a novice. I uh, had a long, long wait for this one and ordered that direct from a novice. And I kept getting delay notifications and everything else. And eventually, after about a year and a half, they delivered it. And it's pretty good, pretty spectacular. Next to that, we've got the novice Shore Trooper helmet. Again, phenomenal. I got this on eBay for about £500 a couple of years back. It's a great helmet, what a design. It's uh, a fantastic designed helmet. The colour's amazing, the weathering's amazing. It's a very, very well put together helmet. Then we have the Duo Nubo, or whatever they're called, the, the company that rose from Anovis Ashes. Um, Genomeric, Blue Leader helmet from Rogue One. This took almost five years, four or five years, from order, no, I think it was four years to get here, and I never thought it was going to happen. So I pre ordered that four years ago, and it was just no news. It came from, I ordered it through a big bad toy store in the, the US, uh, paid a deposit, and just heard nothing. And then waited, waited, waited. I wasn't holding my breath to get it. I thought, they'll never make it. Four years later, I then get a notification email. Your helmet is shipping soon, and within a week, it was shipped. 
<laughs> so they made it. They finally made it, and I'm really, really happy with it. It's a good, solid helmet. Cost me a bit more than what I would have liked to have paid. I think all in it, with, with taxis and shipping, it cost about four fifty. So it's a very expensive helmet to get here in the UK. But um, I don't imagine there'll be very many of them floating around in the UK, to be honest with you. And then next to that's um, one from, this is the RS Prop Masters helmets. I've got three of them. We've got the Luke Skywalker Red 5, which is phenomenal. Uh, very true to the actual movie prop. Then we've got a signed Dennis Lawson Red 2 Wedge um, helmet, again from RS Prop Masters. And then we have the Y-Wing. How I managed to get in the Y-Wing run is anybody's guess. I was just right place, right time. But the Y-Wing is phenomenal. Um, one of a hundred made. This is number, I think it was number 18. Yeah, number 18. So it's one of the first batch of 30 that went out. And it's, uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic piece. Not very many of them in the world, I'll tell you. Right, so that's the Star Wars helmet section. Before we go with the 1 to 6, we'll do the 1 to 6 last because that'll take the longest and we're already 20, 25 minutes in. Uh, I'm very quickly just going to run through all the things down here. So we've got the United Cutlery Witch King helmet. This one was bought phew, 12 odd, maybe, maybe even longer, 14 years ago. It's a phenomenal helmet but it's, it's so big it's hard to display. Now I got this for £150 and the reason why I got it for £150 is because it had a broken spike. But that doesn't bother me. I'd rather pay £150 and have a, a line in the spike than pay the ridiculous sums of money that they were asking for at new. I think even new it was like £350. Um, so I'm really chuffed to have the Witch King helmet. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan so I'm really chuffed to have that in the collection. Next to that we've got a 3D printed Geisha mask from Ghost in the Shell. Uh, that actually was from Etsy, an Etsy seller. I've not finished it yet. I've only painted the face white. I need to do the, the, the kind of like the red and pinks and then some, some parts need to go through the top knot in the hair. Uh, and I've obviously still got ears to paint, but um, it's a huge, huge mask. I didn't think it was going to be as big. 160 pounds that cost me. Um, and I think given the 3D print is, is superb. The quality, I need to rub down the face, but the quality of a 3D print. And I got this about a year and a half ago, two years ago. The print quality back then, I was really astounded by it. So I'm really looking forward to finishing that off one day. Then we've got the busts. So we've got the DC Direct or DC Collectibles Batman Dark Knight bust. I think I got that off eBay for about £100. The Predator half-scale bust. Not a lot of people like this one, but I love it. I think it's a fantastic thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, everybody was complaining, oh, the heads, you know, it's, it's, it's made of um, plastic and the dreads are, are kind of like made of plastic as well. Great, because it doesn't break, you know? I actually think Sideshow did the right thing here. Um, uh, controversially, I think they did do the right thing by making it out of plastic. It doesn't need to be heavy resin. Um, it saves things from breaking. The other people complained about the paint job. I don't agree. I think the paint job's pretty phenomenal. Um, yeah, it could, it could be better. You, you could, if you wanted to hand paint it and customise it yourself, you could get a better look off it. But come on, it's a production piece that they're doing hundreds of these things. And I think it's, uh, for, my, for my money, £500 or £400 or whatever it was, I'm really chuffed with it. It's not about how, it, how much it weighs or... It's about how it looks, and I'm, I'm chuffed with it. I think I've done a video on that one, so you can go and check that one out. And then, Chronicle Collectibles, half-scale Robocop bust. I am a huge Robocop fan, being a child of the 80s, uh, and I was delighted to get this Robocop bust into the collection. Paid £350 on eBay about two years ago. Um, I actually had the one-to-one -one scale bust pre-ordered, and then Chronicle folded. So I was a bit disappointed that I would never get that. I know there's another company making another one, but it's just out with the budget I'm willing to pay. So the half scale uh, will do just nicely. And it's painted beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. I'm pretty sure I've done a video on that one as well if you want to check it out. Down below, 
We've got the Black Series X-Wing helmet tucked away in there alongside all my, my books, which is great to play with. That's why I've got it down there. I just like to stick it on sometimes and do Teams calls for work <laughs> or just run about the house wearing it. Uh, and then I've got the, the Gladiator helmet. That was the first thing I ever bought. Um, year 2000 slash 2001 is when I started kind of collecting. And I bought two things. I bought this from Factory X and I bought my United Cutlery Sting Sword from Lord of the Rings. I think it was 2001. Um, so that's the very first thing that I ever bought. I think I paid like £150 for it. Um, and it's made of you know stainless steel, it's heavy, it's proper, proper bink, it's fabricated. It's a pretty nice helmet. And then next to that we've got Peter Mayhew's autograph who also was lucky enough to meet at Celebration a number of years ago. Moving along, some Hot Toys goodness. We've got the Tumblr. Um, camo Tumblr, that was a bargain. I came across, there was many years ago, there was all these other 1.6 websites and there was one called 1.6 Bruce. The two Tumblrs reduced in sale, 150 pounds. About four years ago, uh, and I jumped on it, 150 quid. And all that was wrong with it, was them wheel caps had popped off, so just popped them back in. There's also a couple of wee broken pistons in the back, but you don't really see them. But overall, the tumbler is a huge piece. It's really, really cool. And I can't complain about the price I paid. Then, moving on to the Hot, hot Toys DeLorean. This is, is pretty cool as well. Again, this was a bargain. I got it on Collectibles Direct. A Black Friday offer where they had like 25% off all in stock items at the time. Um, the DeLorean should have been about 550 and I'm sure I got it for like 300 and something um, at the time. So I was really delighted. Or was it? I think I got it for 500 because it was about 700 on the website, but they were having a sale. So for 500 pounds, I was absolutely delighted to get the DeLorean and it lights up. I'll not, I'll not, can I turn it on if I get batteries in it? Nah, I've taken the batteries out. I don't like having stuff with batteries in. Anyway, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I, I, I love the DeLorean. And then in the middle is something I made myself uh, many, many years ago. It's the Gears of War um, Xbox game. This is the Hammer Burst. And I made this in the garage. It took me about a good six to eight months to make. It's all handmade with wood and resin and Bondo and bits of plastic and... All the, all the rest of it. Um, yeah, it took a long time and I was really, really into Gears of War at the time. I'm not so much into it now, it's still a good game, but uh, yeah, that's the Hammer Burst. And then my Sting Sword again, as I just mentioned, that's one of the very first things I ever bought. So that's one of the original Sting Swords, not a re-release. In fact, most of my United Cutlery pieces are first, um, first releases, because I've had them for many years. So I need to find somewhere to put that. Uh, I'm going to put it on the wall somewhere, but where I don't know. And then in this corner, a um, couple of statues. We'll start off with this autograph actually, Bridget Nielsen. I never thought in my lifetime I would be able to meet Bridget Nielsen. I absolutely love Bridget Nielsen. Um, and um, as she popped up Comic Con in Manchester, <sighs> absolutely phenomenal. I met her and Jesse Ventura. Uh, who played Blaine and Predator on the same day uh, and she was absolutely delightful so I'm really really proud to have met Bridget Nielsen and have her autograph. Then we've got two one third scale statues, this one I've done a video on which is the Queen Studios Rooted Hair Joker. Um, I had to order this from um, Primo Collectibles and I think they're in Malaysia and when I saw this in stock, I jumped right on it. So it did cost me a bit of money. I think I paid roughly about £1,300 all in for shipping and the statue itself, but it is phenomenal. Um, it's the rooted hair version. Um, it's such a good sculpt. The clothing, everything else, absolutely amazing. And then this one is the one third scale Joker from uh, Prime One slash Blitzway, I believe. It's a, it's a great piece. I love this as well. 
I was a, I was slightly disappointed with this one. It was very expensive for what it is. I think I paid about sixteen hundred pounds for it. And as much as it's got shelf presence, and it's it's pretty decent, comes with lots and lots of accessories. For what it is, I think sixteen hundred pound is a bit much, in my honest opinion. Would I buy it again? I don't think I would. I love having it, but it's a lot of money for what it is. Um, I mean, as I said, it's pretty cool. It's a great statue, but yeah, it's uh, very expensive. So that's the one third scale Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Then I started putting some wee shelves in here. I thought, what can I do with this corner next to the door? So I bought these wee shelves and I've got some Necker Turtles, which I absolutely love. For like £30, the Necker Turtles, although they're like seven inch scale, they're not one sixths, they are absolutely dynamite. They're cracking. So if you love the Turtles and you're like me, you're, you know, I only collect one sixths and high end stuff, think about these Necker Turtles, less than £30 a, a piece. Um, I buy one a month, so I bought Michelangelo last month, I bought Don Donatello the month before that, I'm now going to buy Leonardo, and then I'll get Raphael. But I'm a huge Turtles fan um, from the 80s, um, and these just, uh, the quarter scale, too big for my, too big for the room, and a bit more expensive. These things, however, fantastic. And then we've got the Mezco Talking Chucky doll. I've done a video on this. This is pretty cool. He says all these phrases, which if I can find the button, I would. <laughs> I love that little guy. It's fantastic. It says all these different movie quotes. All right, kid. Fun's over. And it's uh, it's pretty decent. It's only a wee teeny thing, so it's not like the full scale doll, but it does for me. Um, right, so we've covered off everything. I'll show you the Lord of the Rings Swords and then very quickly and then we'll go for the one six. So Lord of the Rings Swords, as I've mentioned before, a lot of these are original releases um, from United Cutlery. Um, so we've got the uh, Glamdring Sword of Gandalf. Next to that we've got Orchrist, which is from The Hobbit. Next to that we've got the Sword of King Theoden. Next to that, we've got my favourite, um, Boromir. Just love the shape of the blade and the, the pommel and the handle and the guard on that one. It's fantastic. Then we have Strider slash Aragorn. Then we've got the High Elven Warrior Sword. Which is really nice. It's, it's a bit difficult to display, but I managed to work it in. And then above that, something I found on eBay, it's it's made of wood, so it's CNC'd, um, it's about a half scale replica, and it's the Prance and Pony side, and you can see it genuinely is kind of 3D. And it's really, really well painted, in fact, I'm pretty sure that's gold leaf that's on the Prance and Pony text. I think that was like 50, 60 pounds. And honestly, for a lot of things, fan, what a bargain. It's only one sided but it, it just looks absolutely superb in the collection. And then down here, there's something else I made myself, which was the Moria Orc Sword, three foot long. Um, made this many, many years ago, again in the garage, one of my projects after I finished the Gears of War Hammer Burst. And I actually had it signed by Sean Aston, who plays Sam, and three of the Hobbits. So, it didn't cost me anything apart from the price of the autographs, but it's just made of wood, bondo bits, so it didn't cost me anything to make. Um, and I've also made this cave troll hammer, which sits down here many years ago as well. Again, made out of a scaffolding pole and some bits of wood. So, right, so here we go, the main event, of, you know, this, this, this is my, the one six is probably the, the thing I focus on the most. Because um, I do love my 1-6 scale figures. So, 1-6 scale. Now I'm going to chuck in a couple of quarter scales as well. But um, mostly hot toys. But I do have, you know, 
some um, third party stuff or some Blitzway stuff. Um, but let's let's run through it. So you can see I've got them all on um, IKEA lac shelves and my lighting solution is literally the IKEA um, LED strip lights. And what I've done is I've glued and hidden them behind a white um, angle strip, which you can get from any DIY store. You know, the white angle strip is literally just like an angle, which you glue on the edge of the shelf and then glue the lights underneath. Quite an easy solution, but gives you a nice clean lighting solution. So let's, let's have a look at the one six. So over here, we've got what I call the animated section. A couple of different scales here as well. So we've got um, something I recently did uh, videos on. Which lights up and has sounds. Is the Kaneda bike from Akira, Akira uh, as well as Kaneda himself. Um, when this was first released many, many years ago, I absolutely wanted to get it, but I missed the boat. I just never, never picked up on it. Um, and then the second-hand market went absolutely crazy for Ikea, uh, the Canada's bike from Ikea. Um, and then about a year ago, they re-released it, um, which I was delighted about because I snapped one up. So I did pay a lot of money for it. I think the bike alone cost me about five, five hundred odd pounds. The figure probably cost me about two two fifty, but I I absolutely love Akira. When I was a teenager, I watched a lot of manga, um, and Akira was the, my favourite um, movie at the time. So I was really really happy to have this one secured uh, for the collection. Behind that, Rick and Morty from Mondo got that from Sideshow on a bit of a deal. Uh, I think I paid about ninety pound um, for the shipping and tax and everything within the UK. And do you know what? I really like it. I think it's a well-made set. Um, so I really like the Rick and Morty stuff. Then my custom Buzz Lightyear. So this was a, a, a toy. A lot of people have done these um, on the Facebook groups. Um, the Lightyear movie was coming out and uh, Disney put out a, a kind of like a £30 toy. But the... Uh, the, the toys one six scale it's um and the armor is very accurate so I bought one uh, and repainted it and I've put it on a nice wee base but um I'm not a hundred percent happy with it and I haven't done anything with the sculpt but I stripped it um all the way back primed it painted it uh, and took a long long time painting all the little details to get it as 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 perfect as possible before I then weathered it. And I'm really, really happy with the end result after watching. And I did all this, by the way, through trailer screenshots. I didn't have very many reference photographs, so I just watched all the trailers, grabbed screenshots of the trailers and the flashes of the, the different armour parts um, and put it all together. And actually, when I saw the movie, I'm pretty happy that I got it fairly accurate. So that's the Buzz Lightyear repaint that I did. I just completed that about a month ago. Um, and it was even done before the movie even came out. Um, then over here, I've got the 3-0 um, Soundwave and Ravage, which I, I really like. It's a, a sideshow bargain. Then something unusual for the collection, because I don't normally do Clone Wars or Gentle Giant, but this is the Gentle Giant Bo-Katan statue, one-seventh scale. Um, and I just saw it and I thought, I think it cost me like a hundred and... I think it's a, I used some reward points. I got it for like 120 quid or 110 pound. Should have been 150. Um, and I picked it up thinking, well, I'll give it a shot. I'd seen a couple of videos on it. And I actually really, really like it. And I don't think it looks too too daft, uh, given it's one seventh. Um, it's a pretty nice statue. And I don't ever do Gentle Giant. So this is the first Gentle Giant I've ever got. But it's really, really well done. Really well painted. Uh, and the sculpt is pretty nice as well. Then, moving on, we've got, um, in the corner, the original release, Martin McFly. Um, and a, a, a background that I made myself out of a sheet of metal and a truck wheel. And I went to a con uh, many years ago and had Christopher Lloyd and Lee Thompson sign it. Okay, moving up. Blitzway Ghostbusters. 
crazy prices. I bought them brand new. I'd pre-ordered them. Thousand, uh, I think they cost about 900 quid. But they are absolutely brilliant. So it's the four pack, uh, including Slimer. These guys are phenomenal. And if you're a Ghostbusters fan, you can't get any better than these. You really can't. They are brilliant. All the detail, Blitzway did a fantastic job on these. They really did. And I understand why the prices in the second hand market are so expensive. Then we've got some uh, some Dark Knight goodness. So this is the original DX11, which I pre-ordered. That's one of my very first 1-6 scale figures. And it's been in the same pose ever since it arrived. So this is the, the special edition um, DX11 Joker. Standing next to that, we've got a third party Bane, which was very cheap, I think about 100 quid. Um, which I'm really happy with. I haven't really had to do any mods at all to the uh, the body that I bought. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with that being a few years old now. I also had these wee plaques made up. I'll point them out as I go along. Uh, guy on eBay, Nerds Loot, £2.50 per plaque. And he customises anything you want. So I sent him a couple of requests. I think I ordered about 10 different plaques. Uh, and that's what I got back. So that's one of the one of the plaques there um, for £2.50. Can't go wrong. He actually did me one for Lightyear as well. Um, then in the corner we've got the Batman Armoury, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then moving on, Robocop. We've got the Robocop collection. So Hot Toys, um, original Robocop die cast. I absolutely love Robocop. I wish I had more Robocop and I intend to get more Robocop. So I'm looking out for an Ed 209 just now, which I've had before and I sold. I don't really know why, but I did. Um, and then obviously Hot Toys have released the new Robocop 3. I'm not a massive fan of Robocop 3, but I'm still going to get it. Um, so there's the first Robocop. Now we'll move on to Battle Damaged. Battle Damaged, I actually bought loose. There's a story behind the, the, the twin pack. So I came across the, the big rifle from the twin pack and I, I, on eBay one day, years and years and years ago, and I picked it up for £20, thinking, oh, we'll have that. that that's quite cool. Somebody had obviously just separated it from the pack. So I bought that first. Then about six months later, a battle-damaged Robocop came up with all the accessories, but unboxed and loose for £150. So I bought this, battle-damaged. And then about six months later, somebody else was selling the Alex Murphy for £120. Um, so I managed to put the whole set and kit together for like 120 quid weirdly i didn't have the box um but the box is going to the loft anyway but it did bug me that i didn't have the box for i had all the parts but no box and then about two months ago on ebay somebody was selling the box for 20 quid so i've now got it took me about six years to get a full twin set but i've now got the complete full twin set boxed um over a span of six years um, here's Claren's bodyguard. This is a custom by, um, I'm going to say this wrong, I'm going to say it's Legio 7 or Legio 7, L-E-G-I-O and then number 7. What a figure. This is phenomenal. I absolutely love this one. Um, a limited run of 10 figures. Managed to snag one. Had a wee plaque made up as well from the same guy on eBay, Nerds Loot. And um, yeah, everything about this is just phenomenal you do not get clarence bodiger figures um as good as this it's really great i love it and then moving on we have chappy so chappy was um the i didn't buy the special edition i actually bought the um who made this again the three zero three zero chappy so this was actually just a normal police robot uh, and i took it upon myself to just customize it so everything on it, the graffiti, um, the, the, the orange arm, is all just customised and painted from the normal one to make it into a special edition. And I went to a hobby store and bought some gold chains, stuck them on. Still a couple of bits to do to it. I need to put pink on that damaged part. I need to finish off the wee alien thing round there. Um, but overall, I just did it with a paint pen. Quite happy with it. And I also picked up from a, a kit bashing place, a kind of uh, belt with these canisters on it as, as to represent the kind of final battle scene for Chappie. 
uh, and I got that wee plaque again from Nerd's Loot, which I really love. It's the best one I think they, uh, I got from the chap. So yeah, very, very happy with that chappy. Love the movie. And then we've got a couple of Guardians of the Galaxy. So I've got Hot Toys on do, which is absolutely phenomenal. You can't beat that one. It's a great figure. The sculpt on it is 100%. There's no doubt about it. That is Michael Rooker. And behind that, we've got a new edition. It's the Guardians of the Galaxy Ronin figure. I forget who makes this. Toys Era. I think it is Toys Era. This is pretty good. I think it was £160 for Ronin. Uh, and I do love the Ronin character. I think the only thing that disappointed me, and I don't know how they could have done it differently, was the, the head movement is very much restricted by that rubber hood. Um, you can't pose the head, so he's kind of looking up at the sky and I wanted him to kind of look down, but it's just almost impossible to get his head in a position that um, anything other than looking straight and slightly up. Still a great figure though. And then two of my favourites, it's uh, Harley Quinn and Deadshot. Harley Quinn, I pre-ordered the minute Hot Toys announced it. And it's a special edition, so it has the mallet. And Harley Quinn is just a phenomenal figure. The sculpt on that one is amazing. Uh, and I'm a big Harley Quinn fan. Um, so I've actually got a few more Harley Quinn pieces pre-ordered. I've got the Infinity Studio 101 life-size bust. And I've got the JND Studios one-third scale um, statue, hyper-real statue also pre-ordered so there's more Harley Quinn to come to the collection and then Deadshot I picked him up on eBay for about £150 a few years ago he's a great figure he really is um, fantastic uh, and deserves to be in I kind of stick to museum type poses but I think Deadshot really deserves to be in a pose like this kind of action pose but yeah he's a phenomenal figure as well I think Hot Toys did a really good job in these two I just wish they had done more with Suicide Squad because um, there's a lot of really great characters and it would be nice to have more of the team but they picked the two greatest characters from it so I guess we can't complain too much. Then on to a Joker. This is made up of some parts like the head uh, and the overcoat, the purple overcoat and the jacket, the grey jacket was made up of the extra parts from the DX11 that I got. And I went ahead and found many years ago an, a body and the clothes. Um, so I managed to make this figure up. Um, I can't take credit for the pose. I believe the chap's name is One Six Poser. Um, so check him out on YouTube. Um, I think he's the original um, inventor of this pose, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's the Joker hanging. So I didn't do this one myself. I copied it. And thank you to One Six Poser. And I hope that's your right tag. Um, your, 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 your name um, phenomenal pose what a, what a creative idea moving on Ace Ventura from Asmus uh, I'm actually really happy with this one I was kind of debating it because it didn't look like Jim Carrey but in actual fact okay it's not 100% but it's still a great figure £200 or so uh, and I recently just got this one and I really really like it again had a wee name plaque made up for him and then behind that, we've got Deadpool 2, um, which I really love. Just got them standing in a museum pose. I love Deadpool. I don't necessarily collect a lot of Marvel. Um, I, I kind of stay away from Marvel, but Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool, um, to me, I just couldn't pass up on. But everything else Marvel, I'll pass on. Then one that I got very recently is The Dude. The Dude abides, man. So this is Sideshow. Um, again, had to be plaque made for that one. I absolutely love this one. I think there's a, there's a couple of couple of complaints and niggles I could have with it. Um, you know, I think it's maybe a bit too fat. I think the face is a bit too wide. The body's maybe a bit too wide. He looks like a fat Lebowski rather than the big Lebowski. <laughs> um, you know, so, but sculpt-wise... Accessory-wise, I think Sideshow did a fairly good job. I, I really do. Um, I'm going to do a video on that separately. So I'll go through some of my pros, cons, niggles and what I love about it in that other video. Another new addition is the Leon DJ Custom figure. 
I had this before, not DJ Custom, but a different manufacturer, Artois, um, and I sold them and I kind of regretted it. Um, and I really wanted Leon back. So when DJ Custom, and I, I know what DJ Custom's quality is like, um, I, I kind of jumped on it. So I think this was like £180, uh, but well worth it because the amount of accessories he comes with is phenomenal. And it's great to have him back in the collection. Again, maybe do a separate video on that at some point. Then we have the Matrix uh, double set. So we've got Neo. Again, I love Neo. Neo's a fantastic figure. There's so many posing options uh, with Neo. You get a lot of accessories and a lot of guns. I just chose to have him in this kind of museum type pose. The coat's wired, so it gives you a nice little flow around it. And then uh, I managed to get Agent Smith um, at the tail end of last year, I think maybe like October, November. This is a phenomenal figure, actually. For the money I paid, £110, it is a third party figure. Um, but the sculpt, the clothing, everything about it is great. And I really, really wish Hot Toys had actually produced um, an Agent Smith. I think they missed out on that. I know they did the prototype, but they never ever did it uh, for production release, which is a bit of a miss. I think it would have sold really well. But yeah, Agent Smith is phenomenal. And then on to um, So So Toys, Billy Butcher from The Boys. Absolutely phenomenal figure. It's dynamite. It really is dynamite. The sculpt is fantastic. The accessories, the clothing, absolutely dynamite. The baby. And I've had a wee plaque made for that as well. Alita. Love this figure. Done a video on that one. It's a great figure. There we go. And then City Hunter, Predator 2. Again, really big, chunky, heavy figure. I uh, really like this one. It's my favourite Predator on all Predator movies. Okay, we're nearly there. We, we, we honestly are nearly there. Bear with me. I know we're approaching an hour now. So, Star Wars. I'm not going to talk too much about these, um, just for, for time, but um, let's try and get through them as quickly as we possibly can. So we've got the Han Solo Mud Trooper, which I really like. I think the Mud Trooper's a great figure um, from the Han Solo movie. Then we've got the Death Trooper, which is fantastic. Again, that's from Rogue One. Uh, and the Mandalorian now. That's a, that's a great figure. Second time I've had it. Uh, Shore Trooper. The Mandalorian Shore Trooper. The re-release. Shore Trooper Commander, I think this one is. Our squad leader. Again, great figure. Absolutely love it. The Armourer from The Mandalorian. Love this one as well. I think it's fantastic. I think Hot, Shot, Hot Toys was a um, Comic Con exclusive or something. Uh, pushed out really quick. I mean, it was like ordered it one month and within another month it was uh, it was here. So I think Hot Toys did a really good job on it. I think I've done a video on that one if you want to check out in depth. The Mando from series season one, episodes one, two, and maybe three. Uh, great figure. Absolutely fantastic. Really like this one. It's, uh, it's, it's done extremely well. And then on to Heavy Mando. The Heavy Mando is a great figure actually. It's uh, really, really well done. I think I've done a video on this one. The weathering, the armour, the paint detail, the whole presence of the actual figure. It's excellent. It really is excellent. Judas Steel, eh, blah, 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 blah. Best Scar Mando. The way he's lifting off. I didn't really know what to do with him. Wanted something a bit different. So he's launching himself. Uh, that's a great figure as well. I really, really, really like this one. It's a little Grogu and his hover pram. So that's uh, Mandalorian. Love that show. This one is, is my customised female Jedi. So what I did is I took a Rey figure because I love Rey. Um, I love the figure. This is one of these ones where I love the figure but not the character or the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit strange, but I didn't really like the new Star Wars films. Um, I, I, I just being an original um, Star Wars fan, they just didn't do anything for me. They were watchable, they were okay, but nah, not my cup of tea. And I thought Ray could have been stronger. So I didn't necessarily like the character or 
the uh, the film. But when I saw the figure, unusually, I, I needed to have the figure. The figure is phenomenal. Hot Toys did such a job on this one. Um, and I couldn't resist it. And I was conflicted because it's like, I don't like the film, I don't like the character, but I love the figure. So I decided, well, I love the figure, why not customise it to something I love? So all I did really is change a bit of the, the way the clothing was styled. I did make a custom lightsaber through it, um, it lit up, but I've, I've moved it over to this shelf, which I can't power now, so I just put an old lightsaber in. Um, padded out the, the body a little bit more to um, her legs and uh, all the rest of it. And then gave her a kind of hair braid. And I consider this to be my female Jedi, which is Rey. It's not necessarily Rey. It, it's weird. Look, I know it's weird. I, I know it's strange. But um, yeah, I just didn't want a Rey figure. I wanted something that was like, I appreciate the figure. I like the figure. Um, and it's my figure. But it's my figure and I can do what I want. So there you are. A <laughs> um, couple of, uh, of of Rogue One figures. We've got Shiel Inwe and we've got K2SO. Uh, again, original release for K2, so I know Hot Toys are doing a new one. Uh, hasn't been released yet, but uh, that's a, a phenomenal figure as well. The Shiro Inui is absolutely dynamite. Um, that's a great figure. And it's in comparison to everything else. It's actually quite small. I was lucky enough to meet Donnie Yen uh, at a convention in London, so I had him sign this plaque. And I was also lucky enough to meet Alan Tudyk, who plays K2SO, and had him sign that plaque. Moving on, we've got uh, Darth Vader from Hot Toys. Pretty nice. I think this is the New Hope version. I think. Then I've got my Luke Skywalker display. So this is the uh, DX07 double pack. Uh, got that at auction. Uh, bought it from an auction house. I paid £180 for the DX07 double pack about two, three years ago, which was an absolute steal. One thing was missing. I think it was the the medical arm, severed arm thing, but that was it. Everything else was, was intact and it was a special edition, so it came with the, the look head. They're great figures. I think I've got a video on these if you want to check them out a bit more thoroughly. And I've also got the Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker in the back. Trying to almost replicate a bit of Mando vibes in there. Um, I need a black cloak, but, you know, kind of pose-wise. Uh, really happy with that one. I love I love Luke Skywalker. He's, he's one of my favourite characters ever. And then we've got the Leia and Wicket um, double pack from Return of the Jedi. I, I really like this. I think Wicket's phenomenal. I think Hot Toys did an amazing job with Wicket. He's only a small little teddy bear. Uh, but look at that face, and then look at the uh, the hood. It's very very well done, and the fur is is really good, and the wee hands are really good, and the spear is really good. So if you like Wicket and you haven't got him yet, pick him up. I, I really do recommend. I think Wicket's a great figure, and then Leia, also another phenomenal figure. I think Leia's cracking. Um, I really really like that one too. So. Up to the top shelf, um, and we'll start up here. Batkill. I can't remember who made that. I really can't. I'll need to look it up. <laughs> We've got the Enter Bay, when quarter scale Batman begins. The story behind that one, I'll tell you in a minute how I managed to snag that. We've got the quarter scale Joker from Hot Toys. For the money, £450, I'm sure this was. I'm not convinced I like it. I don't think the sculpt is anywhere near as strong as it should be. I think the clothing's great, the scale's great, the accessories are great. The sculpt, though, the Hot Toys could have done a far better job. It's not great. And then, quarter scale, Dark Knight. I bought this at auction from a UK auction house. A few years back, when you couldn't really get them new, it was only second-hand market stuff. I paid £180 for this one, which was, at the time was a bargain, because they're about £500 normally. And I get that one free! <laughs> so the listing was two Batmans. Um, 
the enter bay was kind of missing a lot of stuff. There's no box. It's got all the spare heads, uh, but there was very little accessories with it, etc. And the, the stand was missing its plaque, etc. But it was listed as basically two Batmans, one loose, one box. This is fully boxed. There was nothing missing. It was all fully complete. Paid one hundred and eighty pounds for that, and I basically get a free enter bay um, quarter scale with it as well. So that was that was a bargain. And then last but not least, um, for the one six, we've got Eric Draven, the Crow. The second time I've had this, I absolutely love this figure. Made my own background to accommodate it. And that's actually originally for a Detolf. It fits right in the back of a Detolf, just made out of wood and a bit of Perspex. Then we've got the um, It figure, which I'm not a horror fan. Uh, I like the movie It. I'm not a massive horror fan, but again, this is one that I bought just because Hot Toys executed the figure so well. Um, so that's the reason why I bought it. I couldn't pass it up. It was too good a figure to let go. Then we've got Django um, from Django Unchained. This one's by DJ Custom. I think I've got a video on this one. It's a great figure. It's so well done. Again, the second time I've had this. I had this before by Caustic Plastic, which was great. I think this one's even better. If you're a fan of Django, that's definitely worth picking up. And I made a background for that one as well. Again, it used to be in a Detolf, so a Detolf size background. Then we have Jack Sparrow, which is a great figure. I absolutely love Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, this is a DX, I'm going to say it's DX 16, no, DX 13. Uh, it's DX15 maybe, oh Christ knows, but it's great, fantastic figure, well done Hot Toys. And then the last one six is, uh, is The Walking Dead Glen Ree from 3.0, I've got this on Amazon for about £80, um, and it's my favourite character from The Walking Dead, so I was delighted to pick him up, I think um, 3.0 did a, a really good job in this one, and again just did a, a background on that, which is made out of concrete and bits of plastic. Okay, so we've been here for an awful long time. I, I, I apologise for the length of time the video has taken and rattling me just blah, 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 blah. If you're still here, well done. <laughs> Thanks very much for, for, for listening to my dulcet tones for the last hour and a bit. I've got one more thing to show you and then we're going to close. And the last thing I'm going to show you is not even in this room, it's in the hallway, and it is the GND Studio um, third scale Hyper Real Joker, which again I've got a video on, it's a phenomenal statue, uh, go and check out the individual video on that one for more details, but yeah, that is absolutely amazing, um, and the reason why it's in the hall is because I'm running out of space, so there's a GND Studio Joker there. Okay, thanks very much for sticking with it if you're still here. I don't blame you if you checked out half an hour ago or even an hour ago. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to show off the collection and talk about it because I don't get to talk about it ever. Um, nobody I know ha has this level of geekness. Um, so it's always nice to kind of share thoughts. If you have any questions, comments, love to hear from you. Please do post them and I will try my best to um, answer or reply to every single one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do like the video. Um, and if you want to see more content, because I, I do plan doing a few more videos for some of the stuff individually in the next day or two, please subscribe. It helps me and encourages me to keep doing videos. Uh, and I kind of, I've lost my, over the last six months, I kind of lost my way. So... I'm trying to get back into it. So thanks very much. Much appreciated. Um, until next time, take care.